Welcome again to It Doesn't Take a Genius, conversation with introspective perspectives and pithy points of view. Here are your hosts, my friends, Max and Marty. I think that's Mark and Mike. Yeah, whatever. Ramsey! Marshall! It's, uh, it's great to see you and some of your friends behind you. Oh, yes. These are, uh, these are fervent members of my fan club. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't call them the family. That's, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be. Uh, that name was taken. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it was. Have you ever seen a uh, totally off topic, but it's uh, it's pure gold. Uh, there's a documentary about Apache, the uh, the song that's sampled in like every hip hop and rap song you've ever heard. Uh, and it's a uh, it's like a disco sounding song by the Incredible Bongo Band, Ooh. and uh, one of the members almost got killed he was almost the first uh first person killed by manson's cult just amazing like hit out in the in the box canyons for like three days trying to escape just it's stunning absolutely stunning worth every second of your life that you give to this documentary so well well the fact that we almost lost the incredible bongo band i'm telling you (laughs) you know would have been a tragic loss for all of mankind I, I have converted I have converted my children to incredible bongo band uh, dare I say cult members to bring us back on topic so oh yeah, yeah yes well let's let, let's just ponder for a second and think about <laughs> putting the word incredible in your title <laughs> right yeah, in your name yeah it's just beautiful I'm the incredible Mike Marshall <laughs> <You know? laughs> that's right <laughs> already sounds like I'm going to do something good it's, it's yeah it's it's just perfect. Anyway, yeah. Well, okay. Let me let me tell you a story, and then you tell a story that brings us right back to the whole cult motif that we were on, okay. um, kind of as a joke. Uh, but uh, but my story is that last week I had a uh, a, a manager of managers at uh, one of my clients, and he works with uh, probably the biggest department in terms of number of personnel, and he was. Uh, going through some changes that he was uh, making and it just it hit him that he had been trying really hard to be like Mark Ramsey and the owner of the business told him like maybe be 20 percent Mark Ramsey not 80 percent Mark Ramsey but that was what he came to me with was you know I'm, I'm just trying so hard to be Mark Ramsey and what he meant by that was making the environment good for the employees in some sense Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, a lot of good with that, right. A, a lot of good with that, but he had lost some numbers, uh, some, some, uh, some performance had fallen off in the course of some of the things he was doing, uh, trying to listen to his people and, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, be a little more transparent with him, I guess you could say, uh, in some sense. And meanwhile, uh, maybe some of the numbers started slipping, um, for, for their, uh, you know, what, what they were trying to do in, in their department to execute. So, um, gosh, you know, be nice or make money. That was sort of how he put it to me. And, uh, and I, and I challenged him on that and we can come back to the challenge, you know, later, but, uh, but so that's my story is, you know, don't try to be like Mark Ramsey was one of the things that I heard last week, uh, from my clients. So you have a similar story. Yeah, almost. Uh, it's interesting. Probably around the same time as you were having your conversation, I had a conversation with the, the with the general manager of a large organization, and and he was he was telling me the same thing. And he started off the conversation really weird. He goes, he goes, I figured out what's missing. I'm like, what's that? He goes, he goes, we don't have a culture. We have a cult. He says we're missing the er. <laughs> Like, whatever okay. er is right yeah whatever er is right so he went on to explain he says we got the first half down right we've got we treat people with kindness and respect and dignity and transparency and we we've just come so far in that and we've completely forgotten about the er which is performance execution and urgency yeah. and so so he says we're playing with half our culture and right. our entire culture would be all of these things. And so same thing. He thought maybe the pendulum had moved too far to the, uh, you know, to the right on this thing. Yeah, I, I think that's great. And um, it's, it's funny because I, 
I often will make a point to call a meeting to a gigantic halt. If somebody says to me, you know, well, like you want us to be nice. And, and I'll say, Dang it, time out, time out. I have never said the word nice to you. I don't, I don't know that niceness is even in the Bible. Uh, you know, there's the, the, the verse in Galatian that talks about the fruit of the spirit and the fruit of the spirit. One of them, you know, it's love, joy, peace, patience, uh, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, all wonderful things. But notice kindness is there, not niceness. So, so we, we have a, a real um, desire, I think, on our part, Mike, you and I both, we, we have different styles, but both of us want people to be treated with dignity. <laughs> you know, we want, we want treat people to be treated kindly. Um, we want people to have relationships and, and uh, have conversation. But um, I, I got some training from uh, the Right Path organization to be certified for the, the Right Path uh, personality assessments. And one of the things they said that I loved was, you know, which, which do you want, uh, results or relationship? And of course, it's a trick, right? Because you need relationships to get results. Mm -hmm. so, so you want both, actually. So yeah, the pendulum doesn't swing left or right so much as you need both sides of that pendulum. Um, to to be a successful organization. Well, and you think about, you're exactly right. And you think about how we got here. And so we go in mm -hmm. and a lot of times we're working with organizations that already have, right? We're not working on the part that they already have, right? They're already driven and they're hard nosed and they're, you know, they're all focused yes. on the, the execution yes. and process and stuff like that. And yep. so, so you look at that and you go, okay, you don't need my help on that. Uh, right. right but but the consequences of that the, often we see that as a short term uh, you can drive performance for a, a short amount of time but eventually turnover starts to increase burnout uh, you know people start to underperform you get you get a culture that's toxic uh, where people are going mm -hmm. at each other instead of trying to, to accomplish what it is we're trying to do as an organization and so we came in to organizations like that and started talking about transparency and kindness and, and dignity and respect and, and, and valuing people for their ideas as much as for their hands. And, yes. and you can take the, like anything, you can take it too far. And, right. And, and so yeah, in both cases, the organization was lamenting the fact that maybe they lost a little bit of that execution performance. And I even had a manager and he told, he told the general manager, he says, he says, yeah, he says, you know, cause he was probably one of the most hard driving managers I'd ever met. And, and he said, yeah, he says, you know, I, I, I can't, you know, I can't go talk to the sales guys anymore. Mm -hmm. well, Whoops. Well, no, no, you can go talk to the sales guys. You just can't go talk to them the way you used to talk to them. Right. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And, and he saw it as, a, as an all or nothing. If I can't be that guy putting a boot in their butt and, and just destroying them and hoping that performance will come out of the beating, uh, then, yeah, I'm just not allowed to coach them. Right. That's not what we said. Right. right. We asked you to go about it a different way. And in many cases, we provided tools to do that. How to have great coaching conversations, how to ask questions, how to get people to discover what it is that they need to do next. Uh, we, we, you know, but all he saw was if I can't, if I can't beat them up, then I can't have the conversation. So well, therefore, I'm not talking to them. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just stop doing what I'm doing. And what we're saying is change how you're doing what you're doing. Um, I think uh, our friend Chris Hunsicker likes the phrase transactionally competent. You know, that um, these organizations that, you know, you and I typically call on, Mike, they're already rabidly successful. They didn't need us to be successful. They were already so competent in how to do the transactions uh, that, that are a part of whatever their business is, uh, that they were making lots of money. They were, they were successful. And what we're talking about here is, like you said, uh, the long-term gain is uh, something where, uh the motivation is beyond the money, right? Uh, money motivates to a point. We're not saying get rid of the money motivation. We're saying that there might be other things. Um, uh, the, uh, uh, the book Drive by Daniel Pink talks about, uh, I always remember it's AMP. You want to AMP your people, AMP. Mm -hmm. uh, beyond money, it's autonomy, mastery, and purpose. And uh, that's, that's probably a whole other podcast. We've, we've got 
some more of, of this uh, podcast uh, uh, that we're doing today sort of planned out as uh, maybe future episodes, just talking about, you know, how do you make sure you have both halves of the culture? Uh, but the, just the idea that there might be more that you uh, more levers that you can use in your organization beyond just the one that's charging uh, toward, uh, you know, uh, uh, adherence to a process, uh, you know, uh, uh, high, uh, high accountability for our people uh, where, you know, they, they have to perform and money's the one thing we know turns everybody's uh, switch on. So let's do it. And every one of our clients would agree. We know, of course, that's not true. Mm -hmm. um, and so the question is, so what we're doing doesn't need to necessarily change. It's how we're doing it uh, that can be a real uh, game changer for the long term. Short term, you're fine. But for the long term, you're going to save a lot of people this way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and the, 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 it's, it, it sounds like heresy to say it, but the, but the pay plan change is the last resort of a desperate manager. Wow. Uh, if, if, there was, if there was the perfect pay plan that motivated people, right, the purpose bonus system, and it motivated people, in today's, in today's age, we would know about it, and we all would have adopted it. Hmm. There, so there obviously isn't one because we haven't adopted it, right? It's, it's not, you know, it's not universally, you know, you oh. know, renowned at this point. Yeah. So the reality is, yeah, if you're trying to, to make all the change, drive all the performance with money, uh, right. then yeah, you're missing out. And that's one of the things that we arm our, our clients with is, is alternate ways uh, to drive performance. And I, I, I think there's one other thing here that, that's missing is, is the, the managers have to role model uh, both sides of this culture, right? The entire culture. Mm -hmm. So they have to treat people with dignity, respect, and, and, and kindness, but they also have to consistently execute. They have to consistently have trainings. They have to consistently follow up uh, with their people after coaching sessions. They have to review the numbers. They have to do these things on a consistent, mm -hmm. ongoing basis to, to fill in that, that performance, accountability, uh, execution piece. And so going yeah. and having the one, you know, you know, as they always say, the come to Jesus meeting, right, <laughs> right? right. Or, you know, then walk away and think, okay, I've, yeah, I've instituted some execution and performance right there. Uh, yeah, stand yeah. back and watch, uh, you know, and then they'll lament, you know, I had to come to Jesus meeting, it was good for about three days. And then it, yeah, it just wore off, he went back, back to doing what he was doing. <laughs> right. Yeah, because it doesn't work. Right? Yeah, yeah. You took a bath last week. Yeah. Are you going to take another one? Yeah. <laughs> Why? Well, because the first one wore off. <laughs> you know, it had, you know, as we've learned our new word of the pandemic, it had less efficacy as time went on. <laughs> and so you have to revisit these things. So if you right. want consistent execution and performance from your people, you as the leader have to be able to hold yourself to the same standard. And not think you're going to do it with a with a you know a tirade or a or a shock right. and all kind of kind of interaction with people. So uh, why don't I wrap us up by dropping four sentences that uh, came up in uh, the the leadership team meeting that I had last week, where this this uh, B Mark Ramsey phrase came up, and and the reason I want to do that is because. <laughs> Because uh, it's such a good summary of a lot of what we've said, and each of them ought to be, now that you've got the concept that there's two sides of a pendulum, and if you want long-term success, you need both sides, um, I think we can revisit these four uh, sentences um, to sort of parse out, here are, the, here are four things that you really need to be watching on making sure that you have as part of your ecosystem if this is, if this is what you're headed for. If you want the full culture and not just a cult. Um, so, so I'll read these. Uh, th these bubbled up in a meeting last week. Culture trickles downhill. Start with the why. Clarity is kindness and not niceness, you notice. Uh, clarity is kindness. And then the, finally, accountability is a two-way street. So again, culture trickles downhill. Start with the why. Clarity is kindness. And accountability is a two-way street. We'll get into the details of those um, in, in the future, 
uh, but uh, but be thinking, you know, just as I'm just sort of thinking of a, a parting shot here for somebody who's going into the workplace after listening to this, maybe they're on their, you know, drive into work and, and hearing us right now. What are you liking about your culture that you do want to keep? And what's the part that's missing that you see as an opportunity? There's some gap there. And, and you know, coaching is to help you fill that gap between, you know, desired state and current state. Um, so uh, be thinking about that because these uh, four sentences are a way for you to stair step into that new reality for your organization. Any closing thoughts from you, Mike? Well, just uh, the, the fact that you have to have the, the well-rounded approach and you lay out in your, your, your four statements, the well-rounded approach. And as we know, if, if just one is missing, the ride becomes extremely bumpy. You know, yeah. the, the, the wheel is flat on one side, right. then it's going to mess up everything else. So, so yeah, the, the, the lament that we move too far one way is a perfectly wonderful lament. It just means that, that we weren't holistically focused. And if, we can, if we can stay focused, on all of this, then we have an organization that performs in the short run and has the opportunity to last a lifetime. Love that. Love it. All right. Well, speaking of lasting a lifetime, you know whose voice is timeless? Oh, yeah. Mr. Wolf. Uh, yes. Mm, mm. Yeah. Got the coolest last name ever. <laughs> he does. And, you know, when I think of, you know, kindness, I think of Mr. Wolf. <laughs> Do you? No. Oh. Well, all right. No, not so much. But let's see what he has. And there you have it. Another session of contemporaneous extemporizing from Mark and Mike. I know it's redundant, but consider who we're talking about. As always, feel free to share the ideas you heard here. No right to reserve, no permission needed. Thanks. See you next time on It Doesn't Take a Genius. That's good enough.